All right, section 3.5 is on combining functions. We are going to combine functions arithmetically, and we are also going to be finding the composition of two functions. Now, when you find a composition um, of two functions, it's a little bit trickier than just doing arithmetic operations on them. So I've got the rules written here for arithmetic operations, like the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient. These are very, very straightforward. Um, the notation here looks like this. So you're finding f plus g of x, and all you're finding is f of x plus g of x. So we have an example over here. If I'm finding f plus g of x, this is f of x plus g of x. And I simply take f of x, and I add to that, I find the sum of that and g of x. So this ends up being 3x plus 4. This is really, really basic, very straightforward. Um, I'm going to let you guys do the rest of those, 2, 3, and 4. Just try them really quick. They don't take very long. Um, and then check those with the key just to verify that you understand. But again, look at the notation here and make sure you understand what that notation means as far as what the rule is for, for the operation. Let's go to composition of functions. So a composition of a function is slightly more difficult. Oops. Um, in a composition function, you are using the output from one function as the input for the other. So uh, the notation also looks different as well. Notice you have that open circle here. So this is read as f of g of x, and that's how I'm going to say it out loud too, f of g of x, or if I, it were reverse g of f of x. So let's, let's start with two pretty basic also um, examples here. They're both linear, so I'm not going to get too crazy with you know an example where you're, you're doing a lot of calculations, um, because you will be doing a lot where you've got you know x cubed and x plus 2 squared and you have to you know plug it in and it gets kind of crazy I just want to make sure you understand the basics for it and then you can do those more difficult problems on your homework tomorrow okay so f of g of 3 just means you are gonna find g of 3 and you are gonna plug that in so you find the output of g of 3 so when g is 3 that means that x is 2 or, sorry, y is 2, you're using this output now as your input for f. So you're really finding f of 2 here. So you're just evaluating when, when x is 3 inside of g first, and then you're plugging that in, your output, back into f. So f of 2, of course, would be just 2 plus 2, and I get 4. So f of g of 3 is 4. Okay? Try g of f of 3, which would look like this, and try f of f of 3, and then check those with the key, okay? I'm going to do something a little bit more difficult, which is to find um, f of g of x. So notice that we don't have to evaluate anything. We have nothing to evaluate. Well, all that we're doing here is using g of x as our input for f. So this is the same as writing this as f of g of x is x minus 1. So if I want to find f of x minus 1, I simply plug in this as my input, right? You're doing that all with, you know, the average rate of change and the difference quotient. You do that often. You're just substituting x minus 1 back into um, this expression here, x plus 2. You're going to plug it in for the x. So now I have x minus 1 plus 2. And again, this is just because we're plugging in. It used to just say x, right? This used to be x plus 2. Well, now we're using this x minus 1. And we end up with um, f of g of x equaling, if I simplify here, just x plus 1. Okay? Now, g of f of x, notation is a little different again. These are not equivalent. f of g of x and g of f of x don't mean the same exact thing. We are using now f of x as the input for g. So this is g of x plus 2. Now g of x plus 2 is equal to, um, x minus 1 was g, right? So g of x is x minus 1. We're going to take this entire expression and plug it in for x. So we have x plus 2 minus 1. So we get g of x plus 2 equaling x plus 1. So g of f of x equals x plus 1. Okay, I actually did not mean for this to happen probably could have picked a different example problem, but see how they ended up being the same? This is not typical. You should not expect to get that every time, but in this case, it just worked out that way, okay? All right, now, when you find the domain of a composition function, 
it's not as straightforward as finding a normal domain. So let's let's begin first by finding the domain um, uh, in this example problem. So we need to find f of g of x first. So let's find the composition. So f of g of x is really f of root x, right? We're using this as our input. So f of root x is root x squared plus 1. This is x plus 1. Now, looking at this new function, so this is saying f of g of x is equal to x plus 1. This looks like it would have a domain of all reals, right? Every number I can plug in anything for x and I would get an output. The problem is though that g of x was our input for f, right? We're plugging in values, um, or plugging in the function g of x, which means we actually have to look at g of x as well and consider the, uh, uh, the domain of g of x. If we look at the domain of g of x, those values, our x have to be greater than or equal to zero because we can't have a negative inside here. It would be not real then. So, in fact, instead of all reals, my domain here is x is greater than or equal to zero. So it's more restricted because I have to look at what I'm inputting into f, and that's the whole function g of x. I need to look at the domain of g of x. It's very important to do that. So my, um, my domain here is from zero to positive infinity, as opposed to you know negative infinity to infinity, which is what this function here implies. Okay, so that doesn't work because I can't plug in any negative values in for, for g of x. All right, now um, let's find the domain of f of g of x. And this one's a little trickier, right? I'm starting to get you into um, a slightly more difficult problem here. So f of g of x is going to equal f of x plus 1 over x minus 1. So I'm taking this entire expression here, and I'm plugging this whole thing in for each x that appears in f of x. So this is going to get kind of messy. This is going to be 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus 4. And on the, in the denominator, 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus 3. So hopefully that makes sense right now. You're just substituting in this function x into, or sorry, this value uh, g of x into your x. You're making that the input for f. All right, now it's just a matter of making sure we can simplify this. So um, I'm going to multiply throughout by x minus 1. So if I multiply this entire thing by x minus 1 over x minus 1, then I end up with 3 times x minus 1 in the numerator here minus 4 times x minus 1. Oh, sorry, this is actually plus. So again, if I distribute here, that would cancel out this x minus 1, leaving me with just this. If I multiply here, that's how I end up with negative 4 times x minus 1, just in case you're wondering where I'm getting that from. In the denominator, if I distribute and multiply, then this is going to cancel that out, and I'm left with 3 times x plus 1. And then also if I distribute here, I'll be left with 3 times x minus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. And I get 3 times, or sorry, 3x plus 3 minus 4x plus 4 over uh, 3x plus 3 plus 3x minus 3. This ends up giving me, um, let's see, negative x plus 7 over 6x. All right, now, if I wanted to find the domain of this, I'm going to take a look at this new function. So f of g of x is equal to negative x plus 7 over 6x. If I were asking you to find the domain of this, hopefully you can tell me that x cannot equal 0, right? It would be all reals except x equals 0. Now, the only thing is we need to make sure that we look at the input. The input function was g of x, so we also have to consider the domain of g of x. And g of x is x plus 1 over x minus 1. And in this case, x cannot equal 1. So if I were to, you know, graph my key points here, graph these 0, 1, everything except for these two numbers is allowed within the domain here of this function, this new composition function, okay? So I need to make sure I can write that in interval notation, and that's just going to be, this is basically a review, negative infinity up to zero, 
right? That's here. And from 0 to 1, and from 1 to infinity. Okay? So this would be the domain here for that composition function. Now, the last skill that you're going to have to do is to decompose functions. So I give you a function, m of x, and in this case, x squared plus 2 cubed. And I want us to be able to rewrite this as two simpler functions, f and g. So you need to be able to look at this and say, okay, what if I made f of x equal x cubed? Well, then that would mean that g of x is equal to x squared plus 2. I'm using this here as the input for x, right? And that would get me back to my original. Now, I could also say that the function, so that's one way of doing it, right? That's, that's one way of splitting that up. Now, a second way, and I think the second way is sometimes a little bit harder, is to say, well, let's make f of x equal to x plus 2 cubed, right? So take something that's got, I guess, an exponent in it and make um, the exponent kind of disappear and use the rest of the function, and then that would mean that, in this case, g of x would have to equal x squared. So that's how we end up with, if I take f of g of x, that's how I end up with um, x squared plus 2 cubed. Oops, I'm in another room here. x squared plus 2 cubed. Okay? So again, you need to be able to see this in two different ways. So let's try this next one. Um, let's express the cube root of 3 minus x squared as a composition of two also simpler functions, f and g. So let's try it first as f of x equals Let's do the cube root of x, and then g of x would equal 3 minus x squared. And again, you're just inputting this whole thing in, back into there, and that would give you your original. Alternatively, you could also make f of x equal, and this time, again, you're going to look at this and just use just x as opposed to x squared to kind of get rid of that, that exponent. So let's keep the rest of the function, the cube root of 3 minus x, and then we'll call um, g of x, x squared. So that's how you would end up with, if you took f of g of x here, you'd end up with the cube root of 3 minus x squared. All right, I actually um, kept this under 13 minutes. Woo! You're done. <laughs>